Hi guys, uh, Rudy is sitting next to me here. You can't see him, but there's an outtake that I'll put at the end of the video and you will see why he's not in the picture because Eddie would not allow it. So another outtake, but let's talk about Campi Flegre. We have just talked about it a few days ago, guys, because an earthquake swarm has been rumbling there. Um, more than a hundred earthquakes. And just today, there have been more than 60 earthquakes already. So the earthquake earthquake swarm is still in full force. It's been going on for several days. After quite a quiet period in March, it started to wake up again in April. And what that means, guys, we will discuss in this video because it is a little bit concerning. So what is going on? There is a potential for a rupture before an eruption at the Campi Flegrei Caldera in southern Italy, in the direct proximity of Naples, with more than 3 million people that would need to be evacuated. And this is close to impossible because the road infrastructure is not in place to evacuate so many people in a short period of time. That's why Residents, especially of the little fishing town Pozzuoli, are taking anti-anxiety medication because they're more scared of a potential evacuation than of the actual eruption. Well, they should be scared of an actual eruption because that can be really like a devastating one that will affect the whole world, cause food shortages, even a small ice age. But let's look at this. So if volcanoes are awakening after a long period of time, and we're seeing this in Iceland on the Reykjanes, Peninsula. If you're interested in that, check out my Iceland playlist. So volcanoes are waking up after a long sleep. So what do they have to do in order to be able to erupt, in order to be able to send their magma to the surface? They must rupture the crust first before the magma can get out of there. And this rupture is preceded by repeatable variations in the rate of seismic event of seismicity with ground movement that comes along with it. With trace the amount of applied stress that is released by local earthquakes. So a rupturing sequence has been developing across four episodes of ground uplift at Italy's Campi Campi, Campi Flegrei in the past. So between 1950 and 1952, between 1969 and 1972, between 1982 and 1984, and since 2004. So since 2004 until now, this thing keeps rumbling. And, uh, you know, already in 2016, there were predictions that it would be ready to rumble and to rupture through the surface. Um, that was an additional uplift at that time of 30 to 40 centimeters. So I think since then it did rise more than a meter, I think a meter 15 or something. The land was rising because usually it could be gases, volcanic fluids, but it also can be magma that is accumulating. And that's the case in Iceland. There is a magma chamber that is accumulating underneath and that's why the land is rising. And then right, sometimes it's subsiding again, so that's called Brady them. These unrests, and that is quite confirmed, have changed the structure of the Campi Flegrei's caldera's crust. So this is a very large caldera that we see there in Italy in Campi Flegrei. It even stretches out in the Gulf of Pozzuoli. So that is a big, big risk because if some magma there gets in touch with water, it has an explosive reaction, so hopefully not. But one in 10 of the world's historically active volcanoes are large calderas that have a size of more than five kilometers spread out. So they frequently pass through several episodes of unrests over decades before they erupt. And that's what we're seeing here at Campi Flegrei, and that's why people are starting to get more and more worried. The Campi Flegrei caldera in southern Italy is a remarkable example of something like this happening. It is huge. It spans about 12 to 15 kilometers if you go across it, and people are living on it, basically. Um, it is the largest active caldera in Europe, and it 
extends west from the outskirts of Naples to the Tyrrhenian Sea, and about a third is partially submerged between the Bay of Pozzoli, so covered with water. The remaining two thirds are home to more than 360,000 people, guys, and that what is so scary because they're basically living in the caldera, in the volcano, on the volcano. The volcano has been restless since 1950 already, and it last erupted in 1538 after an interval of about 3,000 years. Previous intervals have been as short as decades or centuries, so that a return to an eruption phase after nearly 500 years that this thing has been quiet now is a realistic possibility, guys. It really, really is. So these four episodes of uplift have raised the fishing town of Pozzuoli. This is a coastal town by more than four meters already. I mean, four meters. Imagine that the town you live in or your house has been raised four meters, guys. This is really substantial. And twice, Evacuations have been triggered already for the town of Pozzuoli for about 40,000 people. So people know what this is like and that's why they're taking these anti-anxiety drugs because they're scared of that. If you look at what's happening in Iceland, there's roughly about 4,000 people in the little fishing town of Grindavik that's threatened by lava flow and volcanic eruptions. But 40,000 people. And if the caldera really erupts, we're talking about more than 3 million people. And that's what's so crazy. And the first three uplift periods each occurred over a time span um, of a two year intervals. For example, between 1950 and then the same thing again, 1984. Um, so, and, and it was lifting it up between like 10 centimeters to up a meter per year. And the fourth uplift has been continuing since 2004, 2005. So more than two years, right? Almost like 20 years, right? And, and that was also the same, like little less per year, but it's accumulating, right? So between um, one to 10 centimeters per year, but that is 10 times longer and more slowly than in the, in the periods that only lasted two years. So scientists are arguing, um, what is this change in uplift behavior about? Um, has it been caused by magmatic gas accumulating about three kilometers below the surface and inducing a slow rupture in the overlying crust? And once this rupture is complete, it will offer magma and gas newly ascending from a greater depth an easier access to the surface than that was previously available. So that's why understanding the structural changes occurring today is very, very essential for making pre-eruptive scenarios more reliable. And they're not very reliable. The scientists or the volcanologists, the, the other scientists, you know, the seismologists, it's all pretty new and it's not very advanced. So it's still a guessing game, especially with a volcano that doesn't erupt very often so that they would already have reliable data so that they could tell how this is behaving. In Iceland on the Reykjanes Peninsula since November, there's been an event basically every three to four weeks. So now they have enough data to see, okay, the land is rising, there's a magma chamber, it's accumulating about between eight and 13 million cubic meters of magma, and then it triggers an event. But it's hard to say that about this caldera here, because like I said, it's been dormant for 500 years. So there was no volcanology or seismology back in the days that could have really gathered the interesting data like measuring the land rise with the GPS and satellite data. So nothing, right? So that's why. But something significant is going on right now. But you know, this thing is consistently 
doing some gassing and, and steaming. So it has an active hydrothermal system at depths about between 2.5 and 3 kilometers. So the steam can and the volcanic gases are persistently released from these fumaroles, how it's named. You can see the gas and the steam coming out. And the best known of these are the Solfatara and Pischiarelli, that's their names. And they're less than a half a kilometer apart and they're about 2.3 kilometers east, northeast of the town of Pozzuoli. And uh, this town is so close near the center of the caldera. So that's why the historical ground movements have been the largest close to Pozzuoli. And since the Roman times, they have been characterized by gentle subsidence, meaning that the land is, is, is subsiding of about a, a meter 70 per century and then interrupted by intervals of uplift um, and during seven decades of ongoing unrest. And it's, it's you know, um, so it's it has seen like uplifts and subsiding and uplift and subsiding. And um, the uplift and the subsidence since 1950 have decayed radially away from Pozzuoli. So an intense earthquake swarm is in progress right now. And um, as I just said, 60 quakes already just today. So we can definitely say that the earthquake activity under the Campi Fligri caldera remains high and has reached an intensity that can really give us some head scratching or some concern. After a relatively quiet March, the seismic events have began to increase at the beginning of the month without decreasing significantly since then. So it keeps going. And the earthquake activity can therefore be described as a coherent swarm earthquake, which is made up of hundreds, really guys, hundreds of individual earthquakes. Just today, the strongest single earthquake had a magnitude of 2.2 and a depth of 2.7 kilometers, and the epicenter was north of the Solfatara. So the earthquake activity is continuing as we're speaking uh, right now. Right now, the, qu the quakes are not coming in a very, very rapid succession as they did just a few days ago, but the strongest tremor today is still already 2.2, which for like volcanic earthquakes, everything above 2 is significant. So this quake was at a depth of 2.9 kilometers and it was in the water underneath the gulf, not in the water, but underneath the gulf of Pozzuoli. Um, the stronger and the deeper earthquakes could be related to rock fractures in the topper layer and uh, the far larger number of earthquakes with magnitudes in the micro seismic range so the smaller earthquakes the smaller ones that are part of the seismic swarm because not all of these hundreds earthquakes are two and above there's micro seismic events really really smalls they have their range um, in the hydrothermal system and right now, the ground lift is about a centimeter per month. Yes, officially, they're saying these events are still connected or attributed to the phenomenon of Brady seisms that either gas or fluids or even magna are lifting the land. So deep hydrothermal waters can accumulate in the subsoil of this caldera and they still believe that they are responsible for these earthquakes and for the ground uplift. But this examination is quite, it's like, say, it's an, it's an older method that might not be factual right now, since we know more about this caldera. It comes from a time before it was clear that this entire area in which this phenomenon occurs was actually located in a caldera volcano that is way larger and spans a way larger area. So that's why it could be that this phenomenon is fueled by a deeper lying magma reservoir or a magma accumulation and it cannot be ruled out that an eruption in this caldera will occur at some point.
We just don't know when, and that's the problem. But it needs to be monitored, and more and more scientists are concerned about the recent developments at Cambif les Gris. And uh, another proof for that is that the citizens are really, really concerned. And uh, there was a citizens conference held yesterday in Patsuli. So that shows how serious the situation is now being taken by the local authorities and by the residents. So there were representatives from, of course, the science world and the civil defense, and they have answered questions from concerned citizens um, about the effects of this Brady seism on the city, right? I mean, even if it's not erupting, but the infrastructure, roads, um, sewer systems, ca underground cable systems, foundations, structures, there's a lot of older homes and Pozzoli. If they are being lifted up and subside, it can really damage the foundations and the whole stability of these buildings. So. You know, the officials said at this meeting that everything was within normal limits and there was nothing to worry about. But, you know, um, yes, the Brady Sizem has existed in this region since Roman times. And of course, these ground uplifts, they, they, they can add up to several meters over the years and cause damage to these building structures, as I just mentioned. And, you know, um, but also sometimes ground deformations have resulted in eruptions. So you can't rule that out. And uh, from a scientific point of view, the scientists are saying um, that it's not yet possible to confirm or to deny whether this will happen this time. So they don't know. Again, they know that they don't know. And uh, yeah, in this case, you know, I always say better be safe than sorry. But how can you do this? How can you move millions of people? Um, and, and then, you know, when would they come back? This can take years. So um, it's not pleasant. And I have seen interviews with a lot of people that live near the Caldera and in Pozzoli, and they would like to leave if they could, but they just simply can't afford it. They're stuck there. And uh, of course, these earthquakes, it's, it's a problem with these older buildings, stone buildings that are easy to collapse because they're simply very, very old and they're not built to any codes. So that is a risk for the people that live there too, not just an actual eruption, but these ground movements and the earthquakes, that's a problem as well. So guys, if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel. There's a lot of that stuff. Um, check out my playlist for the Campi Flegri. Check out what's going on in Iceland. That's fascinating as well. And of course, there's other stuff. Well, we just had a prediction that the San Andreas Fault in California might rupture this year and lead to a major earthquake. There's one scientist who is actually from Italy. And I kept saying in this video, well, isn't he busy with his own volcano there um, that, so that he has time to take a study about California. So imagine this, the San Andreas Fault will rupture in California. So there's large cities at risk like um, San Francisco, LA, and it's, it, you know, all the other cities, Santa Barbara, there's many, many towns and coastal cities. So this, this uh, fault line goes basically from Eureka to almost San Diego. So it doesn't have to rupture full length, but it can disrupt a lot and there's a little tiny settlement that's basically right on the fault line and i'm talking about this in my video what's going to happen there so check it out here in the end screen thank you so much for watching guys please leave this video a like that would be very very awesome and here is the rudy outtake at the end bye bye hi guys it's rudy and i and eddie will not allow it and that is good because there's too much mess behind us. How huh, Woody, what do you think? Should we should we do a video with all the mess behind us that we haven't cleaned up? Eddie says no. Eddie says no. Okay, we're we're not going to do this. So this is probably going to be an outtake because my boss says no, so cut.